years old when he went missing in Yorkshire, England. On March 2nd of 2010, he left for college at 8 in the morning, which he did every single day. Um, but he was never seen again. And when he didn't come home, his parents were trying to get in contact with him, but they couldn't reach him. And that was not like him at all. Like, he would always let them know if he was going to be late. He would always pick up his phone, and he just, um, you know, they couldn't reach him. So, they reported him as a missing person. Now, police went to their house, and they asked the parents if they noticed anything different about Russell that day. And when they really thought about it, they realized that he dressed a lot fancier that day than he normally does. Um, they also went into his room and found that a pair of his boots were missing. So according to them, he wore a pair of black, I think, iron tip boots. And he, they said that his pair of brown iron tip boots were also missing. Um. So for some reason, he took two pairs of shoes with him. Now, the next day, he still hadn't contacted his family, so police contacted his college to see if he had turned up that that day or, like, the day when he went missing. But at that time, the school didn't have a registry. Now, um, the police could have asked his teachers, they could have asked his fellow classmates if he had shown up that day, but they never did. I don't know why. I don't know why they didn't investigate that further. Um, <clears throat> but they never asked anyone if they, if, you know, if he had shown up that day. My guess is that he didn't because I imagine that some of his classmates would have come forward. Like, he's a missing person. If they had seen him that day, I, I think that they would have told police that voluntarily. So they were then called to an abandoned car, which matched the description of Russell's car, but it was 45 mi miles away from his home. It was parked in a coastal area named Benton Cliffs, and it had been there since the morning that Russell left his house. The warden had seen it that morning, and it was still there at 5 p.m. When he looked through the window, he saw that the car had an all-day parking pass, so it was allowed to be there. Um, but it was still there the next morning, so then he called police to basically get it towed because it was either abandoned or it was parked illegally since the parking pass had expired. Um, it was confirmed to be Russell's car, so he definitely didn't go to college that day. Um, so they started searching the area that his car was found in. Now there was an abandoned RAF bunker nearby. Uh, if you don't know, the RAF stands for the Royal Air Force. Um, now... The police thought he might be staying in it, but I find this a really p confusing piece of information. So, um, they never went inside the RAF bunker. It was concrete, and it was pretty much closed off. And we'll see later, and we'll see later in the case just how closed off it was. So the fact that they thought he might have been in it, but they didn't want to look inside it because they thought it would be too difficult for him to get in the sure. I don't know if this is conflicting reports or what, but they basically thought he, he would have been too difficult for him to get into the bunker on his own, and yet they thought he might have been in it, so I don't know. Um, regardless, they didn't search it inside. Um, they only searched it from the outside with some heat sensing equipment. Now, you know, if he was in there and he died, before, then heat sensing equipment wouldn't have picked him up because his body would have been cold. If he wasn't in there, but he had been, then maybe some of his belongings were still in there, and again, a heat sensor is useless. I don't, I don't think it's a bad idea to use a heat sensor, but do rely on only that when you're looking for a missing person. I don't think it's very useful. Um, his family was also very frustrated that police didn't search the bunker. They thought maybe some clues could be in there that were never found. However, police did do a very thorough search of the area outside the bunker, including air and water. Unfortunately, those cliffs are a very popular point to commit suicide from people jumping into the water. Um, and so, suicide was a big theory from the start. Um, 
now he has been missing. I'm just gonna put that out there now. He has been missing for eight years and nothing of his has ever washed up. Not a piece of his body, not any of his belongings. So I don't know if, you know, if I really believe that that's what he did. Um, police went back to talk to Russell's family and asked him if they noticed any strange behavior from Russell. Now, they remember that he acted odd about three days before his disappearance. He left that morning and stayed away until really late in the evening. And when he came home, he didn't tell anyone where he had been. Um, his family didn't want to push him on it like they kind of wanted to respect his privacy he was 18 you know he was an adult but he didn't want to talk about that day with him, like at all um police checked his debit card for charges he made that day and they were at three different places in the yorkshire area one of them being that coastal area where his car was found days later so police checked his debit card activity on the day of his disappearance, but it wasn't used that day at all or ever since. Um, which does make people believe that he is dead because, uh, like, if he ran away, where was he going to get money from if he didn't use his debit card at all? So police went back to his parents' house to get all the electronic devices like phones, laptops, etc. to see if they could find any clue uh, as to where he might be in his online activity. Incidentally, on Russell's father's laptop, they found 415 indecent photos of children, uh, which were sent to him by another unnamed family member. Uh, he was put on the sex offenders registry, but he faced no criminal charges for the possession of those photos. Um, I don't think this is related to the case. They never, like, linked it to the case, but I just thought that was interesting. I don't know if Russell knew about his father. Um, I, I would think not, but you never know. So, um, police found on Russell's laptop that at 7.30 the morning he went missing, he had searched on the RAF Bempton website, which leads us back to that bunker. Um, the RAF bunker that his car was found at was most likely Russell's doing. Like, you know, there are theories in this case that maybe a third party took him and did something to him. But the fact that he searched on the RAF website that morning kind of makes you believe that it was definitely him who drove his car there. Um, he also searched for um, an area called Ravenscar in North Yorkshire. Now, the Bowling family have a holiday home in Ravenscar, so of course, immediately they thought, oh great, well, he searched for that area, he must be hiding there. So they went to the family home to look for him there, but they couldn't find him or any evidence that he had been there. Um, now he had, uh, obviously he had a connection to Ravenscar, but what was his connection to the RAF bunker? So police went back to his parents to ask them that, and they admitted that he had a fascination with this bunker for a long time. In the 1970s, a satanic cult moved into this bunker and used it as their headquarters. And um, they put up all special kinds of artwork on the walls. And Russell had, been, had always been fascinated by what people told him about the bunker. He even looked up the artwork online and saved it all on a USB stick. Um, and it is a big theory in this case. Now, the USB has also gone missing with Russell. It was never found. I want to point out that <clears throat> the artwork on the walls was by, like it was primarily pornographic it wasn't I'm not gonna say that it wasn't like satanic I don't really know um, what they consider to be satanic artwork but it was just a lot of like artwork of naked people uh, doing it so um, being um, a young kid or there's a good chance that he wasn't actually interested in the cult for the satanic reasons, that he was more interested in the artwork because, you know, it was basically pictures of naked people. But I, I don't want to say that as a fact, okay? That's just a possibility. I don't know Russell. I don't know what kind of person he was, and I don't want to assume anything about him either. Um, so 
three years later, then police finally decided to open the bunker and search it. Now the family had to pay for it. They had to pay the cost of opening up the bunker. So that again makes me think that Russell couldn't have gone in there himself because they had to like make a big effort and like pay people to actually open it up. So, um, I don't think it's likely that he was ever in there. Now, they didn't even properly search it either. They sent in trainee firefighters for an exercise. Now, not saying that they couldn't have done a good job, but they basically asked firefighters to search the bunker as a training exercise for them. Um, and this is a real life essentially still a kid that went missing so to use his case of the training exercise I find it a little bit um, disrespectful now nothing was found um, nothing that tied Russell to that bunker so I'll get into some theories the most widely believed theory and the one that police also believes is that Russell committed suicide because his debit cards haven't been used since he went missing and also none of his social media accounts have been used since his phone wasn't used um, he hasn't been in contact with anyone since he went missing um, now his parents believed that he only had 10 pounds on him that when he left that morning so he couldn't have gotten, gotten very far with that and again the fact that his debit cards haven't been used it begs the question where he would get money if he in fact did run away um now police when going through his things found a home video where russell was imitating committing suicide when he was 15 years old now apparently this tape looked very um serious he wasn't making fun of it he wasn't turning it into a joke um, he was really honest about it, and his parents said that he did go through a depression at that time, but this was three years later. He was very happy now. Um, but, you know, you never know if maybe, maybe the depression did come back, or he just got really good at hiding it all these years. Um, since the Bempton Cliffs were a very popular spot to commit suicide, and that's where they found his car, they firmly believe this. Now, the second theory is that he ran away. Um, you know, for a lot of the previous reasons I stated, you know, his debit card hasn't been used, he hasn't uh, contacted anyone on social media, he only had 10 pounds on him that day, you could say, well, that's not possible. However, um, Russell's family say that they know for sure he only had 10 pounds on him that day. But how do they know that? I mean, if Russell was planning to run away, he could have been saving secretly for years. He could have had a job no one knew about that he was making money with. Or, like, if they, if they know he only had 10 pounds on him that day, my guess is that they gave him that. That they give him some kind of pocket money every week. He could have been saving that for years every week and not actually spending it. You don't know that. Um, you know... Maybe he, his depression did come back and he just wanted to run away from his life. Now his parents are sure of the pair of boots that he was wearing the day he went missing. And two years later, when his parents went to their Raven's car holiday home to stay, they found his boots there. So they think that he stayed in there for a while, you know, presumably... Um, after he knew, like he obviously, if he did run away, he would know that police would search the holiday home. So he presumably waited a few days or even a few weeks until he knew that had happened and then went to stay there for a while. Um, but it is also very possible that his parents are wrong about the boots he was wearing that day and they had been in the holiday home all this time. I want to point out as well that a few years later, a few years after he went missing, two feet were recovered from the river or washed up from, uh, not a river, but washed up from the body of water where he um, might have jumped into. And they were found in a pair of brown steel toe boots, which is, according to his parents, the second pair of boots missing from his room. Now they did DNA testing and turned out that it wasn't his, but since police haven't been doing a very good investigation in this case, it begs the question whether they really investigated them properly. Um, it is odd that it was found in the same pair of boots that 
were missing from his room. And again, it's possible that those were the ones he was actually wearing that day and his parents were wrong about the other pair. But if they were right, then, you know, there's a good case to be made for him running away. Now, a third party, the, the third theory is that a third party might have been involved, that either someone killed him, kidnapped him, or even that someone is giving him money and able to be able to run away. Um, his parents have even said that they think someone might be giving him money. Um, now his family said that he was a very happy kid, that he had so many plans for the future. He was really excited because his father had just agreed to give him a 300,000 pound loan to start up his own business. I don't know what that business was. Um, but he wouldn't just walk away from all of that. And and why would he drive up to Bentham Cliffs and pay for a full day of parking only to jump off? And this is a piece that I find very weird as well. So, um, for as far as I understand it, you can either pay for a day parking pass or you can pay per hour. If all you plan to do is jump off a cliff, but you don't want people to get suspicious too quickly because your car is parked illegally, then pay for two or three hours. I don't know why you would pay for an entire day. Um, now, because <clears throat> if another person paid for a full day parking, that would give him 24 hours to do something, to hide Russell somewhere, whether with bad intentions or to help him, because no one would uh, report that car being there since he was allowed to be there, basically for 24 hours. Um... Now, this is another thing. His parents know for sure that he only had 3.8 liters of petrol in his car. I find it so strange. They knew for sure he only had 10 pounds on him. They knew for sure he only had 3.8 liters of petrol in his car. That's a very specific number. If you drove the car and you saw that the petrol was very low, you could say like, oh, he had maybe four or five liters left. But no, they specifically know he had 3.8 liters left, which I find so bizarre. But they are absolutely certain of this. Um, so they basically say that since the cliffs were 45 minutes away, there is no way that he would have made it with 3.8 miles. He would have had to refuel somewhere along the way. And with only having 10 pounds, um, they don't see this as likely. I don't know how much a day parking pass cost. If it cost five pounds, he could have put maybe five pounds worth of petrol in his car and made it. They theorized that he would have made it about uh, 30 minutes. So with five pounds of petrol, you could potentially make it for another 15 minutes. I don't know anything about how much petrol was in his car when they found it. But his parents tested this theory. They took Russell's car with exactly 3.8 liters in it and drove it to the Bentham Cliffs. They said that indeed after about 30 minutes they ran out of petrol and they had to get more. But, you know, they didn't say whether they tested it with 5 pounds or more. Um, I don't know how much the, the, the parking pass was, so I can't even say if that would have been enough. Now, there are two and a half hours unaccounted for that day because he didn't buy the parking pass until 11.30 a.m., but he left his house at 8 a.m. So, and it was only a 45-minute drive. So, where was he for those two and a half hours? Did he maybe go pick up a friend? Was this a friend who he told about that money he was going to get from his dad and did that friend have bad intentions and want to get that money? Um, I don't know. But I'm not ruling out a third party either. Um, and then the last theory is his potential involvement with this satanic cult. Now, a lot of people believe this because the USB stick with the cult artwork also went missing. Now, maybe the cult heard that Russell put all of this artwork and kept it and they wanted to get rid of him. Maybe he wanted to join them and maybe he's with them right now. Or maybe the cult didn't want him to join them and they killed him. Um... But I do want to point out that this cult hasn't been active since the 70s, at least not known. You know, they hadn't used that bunker in a, since the 70s, and it isn't actually 
found anywhere that they were still active at this point. Um, and since they weren't in the RAF bunker anymore for a very long time, why would Russell go there to join them if they weren't there? Again, um, like I said, a lot of the artwork was really just pornographic images. Maybe he didn't want people to find that in his room and get like a bad idea of who he was and he took it with him whether he ran away or whether he committed suicide maybe he took the USB stick with him so no one would find it obviously they still found that he had this artwork um but he didn't know that so um I don't know what I think about this case I think it is very likely that he committed suicide I kind of, I used to always be of the opinion that if you go into water, that your body must be found at some point, but I actually don't necessarily believe that anymore. Um, a few weeks ago, someone went missing in Ireland, and he fell into a river. Now, it wasn't suicide. He was, uh, he was drunk, and he was sitting on the ledge of a bridge smoking a cigarette and he fell uh, backwards into the river. Um, it wasn't, it didn't come out until over a week later a taxi driver had seen him. I don't think the taxi driver waited over a week to report it. I think it just took over a week to get out to the public or for the police to actually uh, look into it. Now it took over four weeks before they, before his body washed up. Now I know what you're going to think, okay, but it did show up. So why did you change your opinion on it? Because he was found only a couple of miles away. He was found on a beach a couple of miles away from where he went into the river. And it took him four weeks to wash up there. And now this river has the strongest current of any river in Europe. It does lead to the Atlantic Ocean, so depending on how the currents are that day or in that moment you go in, you could have been that you could end up anywhere. But he ended up only a couple of miles away, and it took four weeks for him to wash up there. And there was a point where I thought maybe he would never be found, and that kind of led me to believe that maybe you're not always found when you go into water. I don't exactly know where these, like the water in these Bentham Cliffs, lead. I imagine that they lead to big sea. Um, depending on the currents, you're not necessarily found. And someone in, in Ireland said as well, well, if he still hasn't been found now, should someone maybe check under the bridge to see if maybe he got stuck on something? And that, again, is also something that I never thought of. But you, your body could get stuck somewhere under the water and in that case never be found. So I don't necessarily believe anymore that you are always found when you go into the water. It really depends on a lot of factors. So I do think the suicide theory is very likely or the running away theory. I don't necessarily believe that a third party did something to him. The only thing I might believe in that case is that a third party um, helped him run away by either giving him some money or providing that parking pass for the day so that he had like 24 hours to make some a head start but I don't think anyone killed him I don't think there was really a reason to um I don't know about you guys because I didn't see this anywhere else but I do find the parents a little bit suspicious too I'm not going to say that they did something to their son but I feel like police had to go and ask them questions every time before they came forward with information like um, I think the first thing I would tell police is my son dressed very differently that day, like he never does for school, which I find weird. Or you would volunteer that he'd suffered from depression in the past and maybe, you know, tried to, um, made, you know, made this, um, video about taking his own life or just in general that, you know, he had acted weird three days before. I don't know. And especially with this RAF bunker, if he parked there and they insisted on police searching it, why didn't they volunteer the information that he was kind of obsessed with this cult that was in this bunker in the 70s? Like, I feel like they withheld information. I'm not saying they did that on purpose. They could genuinely be so upset that their son went missing that they weren't thinking about it. But I do question it a little bit. Um, so that was it for this case.
please let me know what you guys think about it in 